so nice to have you here. Um, great turnout. They gave us a really big room for this topic. We're here to talk about public health and wellness in our community. Um, I worked in substance abuse prevention for now <coughs> about 25 years as a substance abuse <coughs> prevention consultant. Doing prevention, yes, working with treatment, but there's prevention, there's intervention, there's treatment, and then there's recovery. And so as we think about health, let's think in those, those four categories and not just like the treatment. Um, and in prevention, there is a definition which I think is a nice definition of wellness. It says, creating personal attributes within the individual and conditions within the community that promote well-being. So, let's just, um, in full group, just throw out, what, do you, what does wellness mean? What are we talking about when we talk about public health and wellness? What are the categories? Just throw it out. Mental health. Mental health, what else? Everybody has a safe place to Okay, so we're talking about um, housing and shelter. What else? Issues associated with aging. Aging, okay. All right. Clean food and water. Clean food, food, yeah, clean water and food, okay. Environmental health. Environmental what? Environmental health. Just Explain what, if, um, okay, so this is a good way to look at it. If you were observing environmental health or any of these, what would you be seeing? So why don't you share what you mean? I mean, for me, I'm just envisioning is, is it healthy? Is it so in connection with um, housing, for instance, is it healthy to be in your space? Yeah, OK. I'm thinking of air, water. Um, air, water, mold. Right. And that's Environmental, water, mold. air. Other pollutants. Yeah. And has anybody heard on NPR, trees? There are, there are communities that have no trees, and um, trees really help the environment. Anything else? Physical, well, physical well-being. Physical. Uh, physical health. I think. Uh, give an example of that. Well, if someone has uh, severe mobility issues mm -hmm. due to their health condition, that can really affect their ability to be safe, to be comfortable, to get around. Pain, just uh, chronic pain. Yeah. Excuse me? Chronic pain. Chronic pain. Yeah, lots of pain in all different areas. And I'm going to also put as part of this safety. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes. Addressing the infectious disease contaminants that we have, that have recently filled, literally filled our city. Yeah, yeah. Yes, public health, right, infectious disease. I'm sure there are many people um, that don't even want to walk on bike yet or on the Montpelier Green because of any contaminants that might be from the flood. Yes. Um, just integrating physical, emotional, and spiritual health. Yes, and I'm also hearing biological. Biological, social, spiritual, physical health. On, right. the, on the wellness side, collective joy. Joy, <coughs> joy, collective joy. Okay, we can continue to add to this. So when we're talking about this, this is what we're talking about. So in front of you, you have, and if you don't have, I have a couple more here, some orange pieces of um, paper. And if you have a pen, please pull it out. And if you don't, I've got some here. And there might be people, why don't just pass this around, just, or give them out to people that need it. So here is your task. Here is your task. <laughs> We're going to talk about one thing that's happening now in the area of all, in all these areas. And you can just choose something environmental or something with mental health, um, or you can combine them. One thing that's happening now, what's going well? What's happening now? So we're sort of looking at what resources do we already have and that, that we want to keep as we move forward in the short term, and certainly you know, as we look forward um, towards resiliency, which it will be our vision for the future. And then we're going to go right into areas and ideas for action steps. So we're looking for action steps. This is not the place um, to be um, ex 
you know, exuding the concerns. Try to just go a little higher in your thinking and imagine and brainstorm and think, if things were going wonderfully in health and wellness in the short term in our community, what would we be seeing? What would we be seeing? And it doesn't, need, doesn't have to be something that's normal, that we normally see, it could be something really different. Like, I'll give you one example of that. For me, I see a river running through Montpelier. A river is running through our city, and it's beautiful. Uh, that kind of thing. So think out of the box if you can, and if you want to. And so you're going to come up with ideas and action steps, and then think about whether, is this an action step in the short term that we can do now, or is this something that we need to consider over time. Okay, we're just trying to divide it up. Then, we're gonna take these ideas, and before we go back, we're going to suggest uh, the top one, two, three. We can just pick one priority and say, this group came out with, this is what we wanna see happen, this action right here. Or it could be two or three action, three priorities. And then, I'm, then we'll go back, and then each of the groups are going to report these three priorities, and then there'll be the next meeting in September. Yes. For those of us that came in late, yes. would you let us know how this uh, board over here came to be? That says welcome relates to the other two. Yeah. Okay. Well, welcome to the public health and um, wellness discussion. And so I asked people, what does health, public health, and wellness mean to you? And I created a definition of creating attributes within uh, the individual and conditions within our community that promote well-being. Okay, so that's a general, that's a nice vision. And then I asked everyone, what does it mean? Mental, it means mental health, it means housing, it means safety, it means environmental health, it means biological, psychological, social, spiritual wellness. It means joy. We need to look at housing, mental health, aging. So that's how it came about. But this is our agenda. Yes. Can I ask a clarifying question? Yes. On the first one up there, um, one thing that's happening now, and then what's going well, is is the one thing that's happening now have to be something that's going well? Um, no. <laughs> okay. I, that, but if you I, know, I wasn't sure. But if you know, a great, great clarification question. Um, if you know of something that's that's happening now, um, we could rate whether it's being successful or not. That could be a program. We can rate rate whether it's successful or not. We may need more resources in that area. But that's okay. What's happening now that helps with mental health? What's happening now? that helps with um, housing and shelter. What's happening now? And try to keep it on the uh, positive, because we never look at what's going well. And that is a ton of resources. We have a ton of resources. And we don't look at what's going well, we just look at what's not quite right yet, and how to make it more right. And we need to boost our, we need to be well. <laughs> and we need to be really responsible and honest by looking at what's going well first. So that's what we're gonna do first. So um, with a partner, someone you do not know, just turn around or whatever, and I'm gonna ask you to discuss something that's, one thing that's already happening now in any of these areas, and uh, share it with your partner. You literally will have you know, one minute each, okay? <laughs>
Um, I'm also a professional, personal life coach, and there's never a session that we don't begin with what's working well. What's going well? What are the resources? What are you grateful for? We never go there. They just want to talk about what's not going well. And one way to help what's not going well is to take responsibility for what is. Yeah. So, okay. So what we're going to do now, we have a very fast typist here. And his name is? Tom. Seth. So close. That's great. <laughs> I don't think uh, Todd is close to Seth. But <laughs> okay. Um, and you fast typist? It looks like you are. Okay. Can you share who you are? Uh, my name is Seth Leonard. I work for Vermont Housing Finance Agency. It's nice to be here. Thank, thank you. For all okay. Yes. Thank you for being here. Um, okay. So now... What I'd like to do is, uh, let's just hear from some of the things that are going well, and, uh, and we'll figure out what we'll do with the rest, okay? Everything's going to be recorded at some point. So let's start. Who would like to start? Okay, and I'm going to ask that we keep our responses to 30 seconds to one minute. And I understand that it's hard to do that, but this is not full discussion. This is getting to your specific idea as clearly as possible. Thank you. Uh, I, I talk with and can you say your first name? Uh, my, my name is Tori Rodine. I'm a social worker in town. A great thing that is happening right now is there's a position for a mental health interventionist with the police force in Montpelier and Barry. The not great things that's been open for about a year and turned down a job because it is underpaid. Please add funding to that. Please add funding to that job and then get somebody who's really good in that job. Really is that an action that you're proposing as well? That's absolutely an action. So you just didn't, yeah. yeah. And so you want more funding for a mental health intervention? We're, we're funding specifically for the position for that to embed a mental health, a mental health um, interventionist with the police force. The funding right now, I think, is the only obstacle. Um, and that would, from my point of view, it would, it would go far in terms of the um, being of support to some of the most invisible people affected by the flood right now. Thank you. Um, go ahead. So Introduce you yourself. Sir. My name's Eric. And this with, the, with the yeah. police department. Yeah. So to, I, I'm not here to squash any ideas. We did yeah. put in for another twenty-four thousand. Twelve from Thank you. twelve from yeah. Barry, twelve from Montclair. Wonderful. The, the money isn't the only issue. It's finding the right fit. That's a challenging job. Okay. So let's keep it. You know, people that would like that job. I, 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 I've, been, I've, been, I've been trying to. I've been trying to assist in finding the right person. I don't want to take up too much time. But we did ask for the additional. Yeah. Support. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. That's a perfect yeah. example yeah. of what's going well, even though it's not going really well. Yeah. But, but, it's, <laughs> but it's there. It is. Yeah. Get the money. Okay. Let's go around the circle here. Get the money. Yeah. Yeah. You just didn't get the money. Right. And they not. We don't have it. Do you have anything you want to share? My name is Lisa, and uh, mutual aid, community connection, community organizing. And what's that, mutual aid? That's going well. Um, folks showing up for each other, coming to the tent at Montpelier Alive, volunteering, helping strangers. Can we give a hand for that? Yeah. That is such a strong resource that's going well. People are coming out of the woodwork with hope with love and with their physical labor. Yeah, yeah my name's Daphne. We had we were on similar wavelengths around community connection. So I think um, people, instead of moving in their individual lanes, coming together, I've, I've seen people share contact information, really check, check in on each other, people they live next to. I know that's true for myself, but I've become closer to my neighbors because of this. And it's been a catalyst for Great. making those connections. Thank you. Yes. Okay, Yemi, with the flood having stopped two feet from the Pioneer Apartments, Mount, Mount Holyoke, Montpelier Housing Authority is going well. They're caring, aware listeners. A lot of people have been displaced, and I go back and forth in and out of my apartment watching them do a really good job taking care of people. That's nice to hear, isn't it? Yes. I don't hear that up at Mary Hill where, where I live. Yes. Uh, I'm Thomas, and I was mostly focusing on housing as well, and so what I thought of as going well is we do have some low-income housing that is state-subsidized and is high and dry out of harm's way. And where is that? Let's, let's name it. 
Uh, I know there's some up on Berlin Hill and then where I live in Plainfield, which is you know in the Montpelier area, is, mm -hmm. is uh, what was was safe as well. Great. Also on Elm, on, on Elm Street. Yeah. Elm, Elm Street has some, and um, the transit center. The transit center by what used to be the Econo Lodge, which what's on the Barry Montpelier Road and housing. We also have the Good Samaritan Shelter. Um, all the down street properties and down street. daily. Thank you, Tom. Uh, my name is Carolyn Wesley. I'm here tonight representing Congresswoman Becca Bowen, but I also am a Montpelier resident. And um, I, uh, my two things, it was interesting to talk with Shannon about our different perspectives on what, what was good or could have gone well better, but that there was an attempt to feed the entire community mm -hmm. in the days after the flood. That seemed like something I hadn't seen before. Um, and then also that there has been a continuation of community events like Mountaineers, like Park Palooza, like concerts and plays in the park, and even with a lot of our infrastructure down, many of those um, joyful, I hope a little kid, particularly family-focused events, it's been great to have that continue through the summer. Yes, I would, I would include in that Montpelier Live, yes. bringing mm -hmm. us cultural and family events and mm -hmm. community events. In the farmer's market, yeah. And the yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, all these things need to be a list. We need to keep them up on our wall while we're feeling mm -hmm. desperate and feeling like, oh my gosh, what's happening to us? Yes. Hi, my name is Shannon Bates, um, and I will be honest, um, it's difficult for me to see at times the, um, what's going well, being a, a business owner, I have a business owner, I'm, Middle of State Street that was destroyed. What business? Uh, it's called Anna. Anna. Oh. Uh, so, um, well, I will say we had a really great meeting with Becca Ballant yesterday. The business owners are coming together um, to in an attempt to address a lot of needs that are not being met. Can you name one need that's not being met? Well, the reason I'm in this meeting is because. Um, we have not had any support from the Department of Health um, or the state as far as cleanup guidance. Mm -hmm. And being a restaurant owner, I'm very educated in infectious disease, foodborne illness. It's like in my, you know, my being sure. after 20 years in the industry. And our businesses, the whole downtown was flooded with sewage. Yeah. This does not go away just because it dries out. Yeah. There's, I mean, the list of infectious disease that is still present in the community that has not been addressed is hard for me to wrap my head around. Um, the health department is not even doing re-inspections for opening business restaurants. <laughs> so but basically, the guidance is Look around, if it looks clean, if it feels good, it feels clean and safe. Yeah. And that's not a reality. <laughs> so that's an action item that I'd like you to in small print to put on your, this, these two pieces of paper you can use front and back, because the next thing we're gonna do is put your ideas on here. That one really needs to go there. Um, uh, protocol and, and developing a relationship. Health and wellness is all about relationships. It's all about relationships. Mm -hmm. Developing a very strong relationship with the Department of Health and health organizations. Um, we're gonna go back there. We're gonna just shake it up a little. <laughs> um, George. My name is George. Uh, what's going well that I've been able to see is the community. That's been stated already, but the fact that people donate their time and effort to help others, that's, I know, it's very inspiring. Yes, Sandy is my name, and I, I have the same thing. I'm up here a lot, just did an amazing job of coordinating and getting people. Yes, how about over here? Yeah. I feel that we are becoming the city more of a family, that we're recognizing the individuals in the city and understanding some of the problems that are brought up by this sort of crisis that's happened to us all. So I'm hearing that you're, you're seeing and feeling more connection. And there's more communication. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'll just echo what Shana Casper, echo what was also said about uh, providing food and 
dehumidifiers and fans and shovels and expect to make that the, the provision. So it's really great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now we'll go to you. <laughs> Oh, yes, uh, Deb Reed, um, and I just think it's awesome to see churches may have been flooded, but they're showing up every day and putting lunches out in front of Christ Church. Yes, I would like to um, actually have that go in there. A coordinated effort by our churches um, continue to provide community lunches and warming shelters for those that don't have housing, and that warming shelter really comes into play when it starts to get cold and there's no place to go until you can get into a shelter, even if you can. It's like six o'clock, seven o'clock at night. So at four o'clock, there are warming shelters. That is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I'm Tanya. Uh, one thing that I think that's going well is that our schools are starting and opening on time, on schedule. I think our young people need as much predictability and normalcy as possible through all of this. Yes. Thank you. And how, and, yes. Um, well, I, I sort of two things at once. Um, one of the things that's happening now is that in walking around town, there's still a lot of toxic silt and dust everywhere. It, it basically got shoved aside in the public areas. Um, and I think that's a concern on all levels. It's mentally reminds us of the flood. It feels yucky and it feels dangerous. I'm hearing that as an action step. And I have an action step, a really specific one, which is the Green Up people are coming on Saturday and they are looking for projects to be defined for them. And I would hope that the city with proper gear and, and safety precautions might put some of those volunteers to work to clear up some of the silt that's in the particularly high traveled walkways and things where people are taking it up, they're getting it on their shoes and taking it home. Every time it dries out, every once in a while when it dries out, and we get, you know, the so wind blowing. Who do so, we contact for that to get that list? Well, I, I, I think the city, because well, is Green Up is coming everywhere, um, I, I imagine Montpelier lies. The city uh, meaning the mayor or the manager? Well, or? I think it would be the manager. Okay. Um, so that's one major, that's a short term. Well, very short term. That's just short because term. there's an opportunity that there will be all these people in town doing stuff, right. and that would be a really good thing to do rather hey. than plant flowers. No offense yes. to flowers, but we really need to get rid of the toxic soap. Yes, and connecting that with the Department of Health was guiding and supporting. Yeah, well, I don't know that the Department of Health knows anything about the toxic silt, it's but, in, um, but right, all people should. Specifically, who to contact about the volunteer work on Saturday is, is in front of the forum today. Okay. And there's links. So if you could put that call out and then maybe put a special call out on the front forum just for that. That's great. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is John. One thing that I think worked well was the night of the, the rain. So I, I'm assuming it was Good Samaritan organized uh, to pick up a lot of the unhoused people downtown and take them to the shelter because all of their campsites which were just mm -hmm. devastating. Um, I don't know who organized that. I'm assuming Anybody? the shelter did. Um, you assume the shelter did. I assume the shelter organized Good that. Um, What's that? Good Samaritan Haven. Yeah, so they, so they they organized and that seemed to go well. And the Good Samaritan Haven works hand in hand with another way which is a place for people to go during the day um, who are experiencing uh, mental illness and also addictions, or anything <laughs> that's disturbing or challenging for them. Could I throw one thing into that that's related, which is? Actually, okay. we're going to move on, making sure that everybody gets a chance, and then I'm coming back to you. OK, you, sir. Hi, I'm Todd Dalos. I actually am just here to listen, but I appreciate hearing some of these concerns, I'm from the Agency of Human Services, and so I'm more of a resource person, but there's a lot here. Can you say uh, what you do at Human Services? I'm the Deputy Secretary. Okay, thank you. So you're really in leadership, and thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hi. Uh, hi, my name is Emily Haas, and I'm also here um, for two reasons. One, I get to be the Commissioner for the Department of Mental Health, um, and then two, my wife owns a business in downtown Montpelier. Um, so we've been directly impacted um, by the business devastation um, downtown. Uh, so I'd like to say just kind of two things from what I'm hearing here, okay? Please do, yes. Um, it's wonderful to hear about community connection as we're looking at 
um, our highest rates of uh, people dying by suicide and sub uh, overdose. And, and connection to your community is one of the main things that um, can support folks um, in being successful um, and living happy, healthy lives is that they feel connected and um, valued by their community. Um, and so I just want to highlight how important that is for humans. Yeah. Um, That's right. And the way we do that is we communicate and we talk and we, we just, we are, we, we listen and we're present. We develop a relationship. Yes, sir. Back there. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Nick Moreland. Uh, I work for the Vermont Center for Independent Living and I'm also a Montpelier resident. Uh, I'm kind of living in the past right now because I'm trying to follow captions on YouTube, which is delayed. So I'm not going to hear a lot of you until 10 minutes later, but we'll get back to that. Um, I want to say what's happening now is that the disability uh, community is really stepping up for the disability community. And um, I don't know if a lot of folks know that the deaf community did not have ASL interpretation until almost, almost two weeks after the flood. And not as many people in the deaf community were directly affected, although many were. And I saw a lot of people stepping up on their Facebook pages and sign language, interpretation for each other. Like I said, I'm severely hard of hearing. A lot of the press conferences and such are still not captioned. And um, so I'm looking forward to chatting with everybody. Can you that. help us, um, uh, can you work with whoever can, is in charge of this emergency service, like for the, for the city? You are, so you are connected to people. Oh, we can't do it alone. No, of course not, that's why I'm saying. So write that down on your orange sheet for an action step. And we also have set and also recording it. So, um, may I back? Oh, sir. Ma'am. Uh, um, yes. <laughs> Ma'am. Um, I, uh, yeah, I, mean, I, think, I think one thing that's going well is that the, is that the city is convening meetings like this um, and, and sort of opening forums to people, for people to, to speak. Really Thank you. Do you um, one thing that's going well, my goodness, we need to hear that from you. I know that you have that program that we talked about. But yes, for you. You know, uh, I think it's brought a lot of different resources to one table to build relationships. Uh, so you know, once we get into recovery, which we're starting to go into now, those relationships that we have might get us a little bit further along, hopefully a little quicker. I feel for you on the state. I, I dealt with the state during the first 48 hours of this flood, and it was a challenge at best, so I was very compassionate for that. That's not going on. But uh, if you can get me my 24,000 to it, I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> what's one, what's one relationship that you especially um, connected with, or sure. are connecting with that you hadn't before, that you really feel is increasing our well-being? Sure, yeah. I mean, we have an incredible relationship with Washington County Mental Health. Um, and then we, we started a crisis intervention team, so we've actually brought them kind of a non-traditional uh, crisis intervention team where it's not just going to be law enforcement, it's EMS, it's screeners, and we felt like uh, that that fit our community better than what the standard box was for CIT, so you know, we're, we're kind of making it our own, and so those relationships that we have going forward when we respond to these calls, it's not just or whatever, but it's us going together. You might see us there first because we're the ones that get the call up, knowing that those people are coming. It's pretty good. And that, you know, I also want to applaud, I'm sure all of us here, there's not much, men there is mental health, but if there is, we don't know. We don't know, really. And, um, and this connection, where now that a mental health person is there with you, responding and you making referrals to them and all that, is a very, powerful program that I would think we're going to keep in the long term. Though. Yeah, and the big piece that we added to it now is the substance abuse piece of the Turning Point. So that kind of built right. the triangle for How us. many people know about the Turning Point Center in Battery? Okay, not everyone. It is one of 14 centers in the state where anyone in the world traveling through Montpelier or Barry can go into this place and find like-minded people, be welcomed without judgment, and who are uh, 
struggling or ready or wanting, but yet not doing it yet, to uh, address their addictions. And we've, we've got people from presidents to presidents' wives, right, you know, through the community, um, uh, someone who's homeless, you know, needing those services, and they're free. Okay, and that's a major, that's, and now the police are connected with people who are inebriate or on opiates and drugs, and doctors are starting to get connected. It's just great, you know, to have those relationships working together. Yes. Um, my name is Kimberly Pierce. I'm a medical provider and a trauma educator. And one thing that's been really working well is I've been working at the, the food pantry. And we, we were serving at least a couple hundred people with food you know, from all the area, we were actually working with the Rainbow Bridge in Barry, and it is like the the food pantry volunteer network is like a well-oiled oiled machine. And right now we're in a temporary space because we're flooded out, and we have to move. Um, and, and where are you going to now? We think we're going to the back of the city center, basically in a couple of closets. Um, but there's also um, interest because so many people come into the pantry for social time too. It's you know it's it's a place where people feel safe, and um, there's there's a, an interest in creating a resource center for the community. Sounds like a little bit like a turning point, but as a place to hang out, a place, a third space where people can connect and actually have someone who maybe maybe need legal help, maybe you just need to. You know, run it by somebody. Maybe you just want to sit and have a cup of tea, but we don't have anything like that. So could you put that down on, you know, on your um, orange sheet? We should, we should do for an action step, what? We have the Sunrise House, which is exactly. Can you explain the quickly the Sunrise? Yeah, it's a it's a peer support and mental health drop-in center that has food, exercise. Peer support, therapy. mental health drop-in. Yeah, and, and they substance abuse can do it. They yeah. have a food pantry in there. Great, right. and I think you're also saying, what about just the communi community in general? Like right now, we can go to FEMA up at Vermont College, and um, anybody can go. Yes. Joe. So, Hi. Hi, <laughs> Denise. Um, yeah, it's been said. I talked about community connection, um, and what I noticed is it got down to the real nitty gritty in terms of someone opening their home so people can take showers. Um, that, that's really, really strong community. Um, and just to talk about the toxic silk, I was wondering where the garbage cans are. They remove them so they can pressure wash the sidewalks and also the machines. Okay. Good to know. That's happening. When we get upset that we there are garbage cans <laughs> um, Okay, Martin. Hi, I'm Martin. Um, I, I would emphasize the, the community connections of just on the street level, working kind of day to day in the cleanup. I've just seen so many people from different walks of life opening their hearts and that I had to know that it, we people had not known each other landlords to unhoused people to people with severe mental health uh, issues just coming together to work um, has created a sense of uh, love and compassion that really has touched me very deeply. Yeah, I'm going to put love and compassion and empathy, um, really important. They're not just words. They're, they're, they're required of us. And, and the small touches that have emerged since then, um, you know, flowers, I think, have been really beautiful that some stores have put out, and um, some artwork, like uh, the poem in front of uh, the drawing board, if anybody, please see that, it's very beautiful. Um, so some of the art and the, the, the natural beauty that's emerging has been really quite um, touching and Thank you. beautiful. Thank you so much. So I'm putting beers. Whether it's short term or, or long term, we want community connections to continue and even get more of this. Yeah, okay. That's good. Um, yeah, echoing what others have said, um, Rainbow Bridge Community Center in Barrie, um, I, I see as being a very positive resource. Connecting, um, connecting volunteers who, um, to you know, local homes in need of 
of volunteer efforts as well as just being a, a hub in Barrie for the LGBTQ community. And Yes, and thank you so much for pointing out a number of you that this is not just about Montpelier, it is about Central Vermont and beyond. Uh, did everybody get a chance to speak once? We're going to take you and then we're moving on to the next okay. question. Um, one of the, something that went well was the incredible way that the young people turned out to help mm -hmm. in the immediate aftermath of the flood. And I give a big shout out to Alex from the Parks Department who did a lot of the organizing with his um, Conservation Corps kids. But what I'm concerned about and, and that is happening now, <laughs> look around the room, the youth are not being engaged in this process. I don't know what kind of outreach has happened to invite them or encourage them to join these sessions, but I was there were more folk, younger folks at the first meeting. So I, I think something that needs to happen is a, more, a bigger emphasis on outreach, especially as school comes back. Yeah. Like youth, to, to get those yeah. same folks who volunteered to talk about what they want to see and what they feel is needed as we go forward. Well, you can put that down there. It could be done in the schools where most of the youth are. It could be done in certain athletic groups even. We can put that down as a very specific action step that really can be taken in the short term. Mm -hmm. OK, now we're going to move to um, your ideas. And hopefully, they're in the form of a specific action step. Um, Let's just come up with a couple of ideas before I have you go into small group just for a few more minutes so you can each inspire each other. Um, I'm going to throw out an idea that I feel strongly about. It's not just me. It's going to be, it really falls under long term. And that the legislature in the state of Vermont made mental health a number one priority. This is, this is me. Okay, you don't have to agree with me. Um, priority. Um, it is time. Yes. It is time yes. to learn about it, to understand it, and, and to hear from the experts what we can do about it. And, um, and we are doing good things about it. Remember, let's never forget that we're not. But we need a more comprehensive approach with targets, multiple targets at, um, you know, at the, uh, the goal. Thomas, you have one. Could you just share one? Because we talked about it earlier. I just want to give an example. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I kind of have this, this short list of a few things. But long term, it's moving from a rental town to a homeowner's town, where okay. everyone owns the home that they live in. And that, how is that? You're thinking out of the box. So, 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 short, so paint the picture to us. Short term, it's eviction moratorium, rent control, you tax rentals and Airbnbs more, and then you have the city provide zero interest loans so that renters can buy out the property they live in. So there are ways. There are ways that other communities throughout the United States and other parts of the countries do this. And uh, OK, thank you. Another idea that you, you know you want to include right now, and yes. Because back off of that, we also just need a lot more housing. We've lost a lot of housing, and we need to just build a lot more accessible, and affordable homes. Acceptable, I mean, accessible, affordable homes. Accessible. Where? Accessible. accessible. Access. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Access. I'm sorry. Um, I think we can have a public process to support. I think there are a lot of public processes happening, and I think we need to do a lot, a lot more to provide more housing options for people, regardless of what their needs are. People are going to be moving out because we don't have enough housing, and now we've lost yeah. so much already. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about that goes the on your lodge? That goes on your orange sheet. And, uh, the Elks Lodge project, yeah. where is that and what's being built over there? Oh, well, that is certainly a space that um, this, we as taxpayers are investing in that's and will be in the long term. And that is a place that's being looked at. The other we don't have, have much land, but there's land up there. I heard that the high school had flooded for a second time and that it might be good to consider relocating the high school. That's an action step that if you feel is a good, is something that you'd like to see. I mean, personally for me, I'm, I'm, I'm for that. Taking the high school down and making that um, a, a wetland because for me, 
I, my vision is that I see uh, a community with a river running through it. Yeah. And how we get you know, the businesses further up, where they go to Vermont College Green, where we recreate our, um, our center of the city. I don't know. Joe Klein. Yes, sir. Activation of sites that have potential and then consideration of sites that continuously flood. Is that a fair summary of that? Yes. OK. Um, you first, and then you think. I'm going to build off of some other people here, but I think in the short term, I've heard a lot of people talking about the strength of people coming together and sharing resources, and that that's one of the things that made people feel connected, which comes into your health. Um, I wonder, it doesn't seem like it would be that hard, I'm known to be naive about these things, to find a way to just solidify those structures or continue them. Like people put in there, like here's when I'm available, here's what I can do, people at, reaching out for help, here's what I need. Um, I mean, all of us probably did a version of that yes. here, or showed up and said, here's what I need, or I have a day, I can do this. Yes. I just feel like there must be a way to keep that going and keep it vibrant. Don't you think that that's one thing that is going well? That, 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 that we have, that Montpelier Live or the city or whoever did it, um, created these links where we can communicate, where we can put our ideas in, and also where we can help. But it needs to be more structured. I think more. OK, got it. I don't know what everybody else thinks about it. Easier to access or something. OK, yeah. yes. what, what you're saying is doing that, isn't it? that there are, there are community needs that are not even necessarily flood related. What I'm hearing is yes. maybe there are community needs that are not necessarily flood related, yes. Yes. that people shower. do need support on, and that, yes. and that that system that was built maybe doesn't need to go away and can become a different sort of system for community support. What they said. What you said. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and Seth Scott is trying to down that. <laughs> just on that same note, just having having a, like a brick and mortar building, yes. not just like a link, because there are yes. people who can't That's access right. links, yeah. and having a place where it's safe, that's new, that doesn't have any past trauma. You know, it's a new place that, that's welcoming, that's trauma-informed. I haven't heard a lot of that, but that's, you know, whatever. The human connection. It's the human connection that someone's always there. You can have a cup of tea, or you can, you know, maybe get some help with whatever's going on. There is a lot for our community to learn about suicide and suicide prevention. I just went to a two-day training, and it basically turns its head on what we're doing. <laughs> the new research is saying. I won't go into that now. Um, but, but learning about trauma, being trauma informed, we all know someone, or we ourselves, have dealt with trauma. Why not be really informed? So, which would increase the compassion and the empathy, and the love, and the understanding, and the communication. Now I'd like you to write down, take a minute individually, and take your pen. If you don't have one, we'll get you one and write down uh, one to three ideas. If you don't have any ideas, great, don't write any. If you have just one, that's all we're looking for. But if you have three or more, write them down. And then after you do that, I'd like you to prioritize them as what's most important for you and in, in your view of the needs of our city and what we've been sharing. Just take two minutes to do that. And that includes everyone here. Um, if you have some ideas as well, officer. <laughs> you don't have to put your name on these. If you want to, by all means.
Shannon and everybody in the back, back, just stand up and come around. Oh, and I don't know if these are, well, just, just we're going to put them on here, but I don't have to take them. And some of them won't they stick. stick. They stick, but it's okay. I'll hold them if they don't, don't stick. So why don't you just come up and read your one to three ideas. Come on up. Thomas, you got more? Are we going to try to stack like upon like and like find the priorities? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Are we finding the priorities? Are we like stacking like on like? Uh, I think that, you mean if, if, if you both have a similar? Yes, yes we'll do that. Okay. I'll put that in minutes, but we're not going to do it quite okay. now. Okay. So, um, and then if this side would come up, and if you don't have anything, don't come up. Uh, so this whole thing. So if you could speak loudly and share. Uh, yes, I think our priority needs to be the blood, dealing with the disaster. Um, we, have, we do not have a town right now, um, or downtown. And I think that the priority should be to make it safe, meaning healthy and viable. And what's one way that you'd like to see it made safe? Healthy and viable. Uh, I would like to see that, I would like to see um, whatever section of the government is responsible for public health. There hasn't been anyone that's really stepped up. Yeah. Give businesses guidance on how, and landlords, how this needs, how to make things safe. I have been boots on the ground through the entire process and Knowing what I know, I'm not sure that I want to work downtown. I don't. I don't travel if I get that because somebody raised my awareness. Yeah, I don't think the public is aware. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay, um, number one, um, this is my dream: a clean, dry apartment for everyone who wants it by the end of October. Two, NIMBY-proof, small, three to five person group homes for various peer groups, mental health peers, alcohol peers, uh, moms who were running away from their abusive people peers. And number three, move the high school to a higher ground. Thank you. And I'll take it. Thank you. Um, how about you, one? Yeah, so I, I actually built on what you were saying. In the past, we've got what was called a neighborhood can groups, the community capital area neighborhoods, um, where those connections took place. And I'd like to see those come back and those connections. And we can get ahead of a lot of this stuff just by face to face communications and get issues discussed. Get the neighborhood can uh, groups going again, meeting in their neighborhood, creating those connections and wellness. Should I read it? Yes, please. Um, yeah, so the first thing is, is, as I said, moving to a homeownership society with, um, you know, more taxes on landlords in order to fund uh, buying out of uh, properties by dwellers. And the second thing is uh, a better understanding of digital poverty. This is kind of before the flood. I really took note of this in light of uh, the changes to the bus structure, where there were a lot of folks who used to depend on getting on the bus at a particular time and now they have to have an app on their phone. And there's, I, I think there are a lot of unhoused, elderly, cognitively disabled and impaired folks who literally could no longer get to the hospital because of that system. And the reason we don't hear from them anymore is because they literally died. So this is unacceptable. That was basically a eugenics policy to take away the buses that got people to the hospital. 
Um, and the third thing is uh, develop the hills. If we have to develop Hubbard Park, I know it's uncomfortable, but we might have to do that. And then undevelop where the downtown is and turn it into a park. It's, that's a big long-term project, but eventually we're gonna have to do that because you can have forests and when they flood, the river gets cleaner. When you have you know, sewage and diesel, the river gets less clean. So we're gonna have to make big changes and, and develop more like places that flood. Thank you, sir. Who's next? Come on up. If we could keep moving and just form a line, because we, will, we want to make sure we have enough time. I already said my one, but my number two is to support our schools to be vibrant, well-resourced, and to meet the needs of young people. Okay. Thank you. So I love the idea of getting um, a library series together where folks are sharing their stories eventually, maybe six months down the line, because I don't ever want anybody to make any assumptions about a person's situation, their identity, who they are, how they show up in the world, and I feel like this disaster is bringing up an opportunity for folks to be seen and, and heard. Um, and then I have a few more, but one that I will share is that I love for the Montpelier Foundation to pay for air quality testing in all the downtown buildings and then remediate accordingly. Yes. Um, and actually do that on an ongoing basis, because this isn't going away anytime soon. For mold, too. Absolutely. Nobody's talking about mold. I'm talking about mold. Yeah, 24 yes. seven. <laughs> <laughs> OK, who's next in, uh, in, in this table? Come on up. Thank you. Oh, do you want this one that you gave to me? Oh, oh, why don't you borrow it? Wait, you yeah. want that one that oh, you gave to me? No, oh, no, yes, yeah, thank you. No, this is, sorry, it wasn't, that wasn't the sign I was trying to give you. It was trying to give you the sign that had the contact information for Green Update. Oh, great, okay. okay. That's the contact information for Green Update. Okay, so if anybody wants, I, I don't, if anybody wants to volunteer for Green Update on um, Saturday. Saturday, the contact, the contact I'll put is um, okay. greenupvermont.org uh, slash what, slash what, resource volunteer, I wrote it down. Yeah, I'll, I'll write it down. Okay, um, the, okay, what, my number one priority is safe and adequately supported housing for everyone, um, including rent control and all of the other um, strategies that have already been suggested. Okay, I mean, thank you so much for your suggestions. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. So I have just short, two short terms. One is with a human coordinator, um, reach out to people who have a, have a room, apartment, wing in their home. Many of us have extra space in our houses, some of us empty nesters. Um, and what would their ideal match look like and create a list of both of individuals, couples, and families that need short and midterm housing and help bring those matches to fruition offer follow-along supports, communication, and agreements in a similar way to home share, but more on an acute need. And then the second one is if we could have something like an ombudsman service to represent or be a person for the city to help people navigate through home repairs and permitting and all those things that are really kind of elusive and tricky. Thank you. Mine is my main point is continuing on this housing theme, and I've heard some rumblings that this is already maybe in the works, but I'd like to see a vibrant Montpelier uh, Tenants Union so that we can continue building on this connection that we've seen and not let those relationships die out. And um, we know that collective change happens from the bottom up, so I'd like to see it. Thank you. Okay, this group right here, yes, the room. Them. I think I've already talked about it, but creating more third spaces, like a place where people feel really comfortable that's not, you know, a rehab center, but it could be, could be for everything um, in Montpelier that also helps us feel a sense of purpose, a place where you go and you can actually volunteer, you can help out, and you can connect with all these things. Um, and yeah, having peer support, trauma-informed, trauma-informed, trauma-informed. Thank you. Yeah. This is very aspirational, okay? Yeah, yes. very aspirational. Um, but when people are in crisis, sometimes they need an attorney right away. And somebody who's gonna be on call, ready to go into action for free. 
And I'm saying it's aspirational. At People's Health and Wellness Clinic, medical practitioners go in there for free. We have a lot of attorneys in Montpelier, so. Mm -hmm. There are various, uh, the Central Vermont Economic Development Corporation has a relief center set up in the old library or space in the city center. For those of you that aren't familiar with it, it's the yeah. empty space to the right you're facing. And they have free attorneys, free um, like financial consultants. I do believe that at this point the attorneys are not there all the time, but you can go in there and get an appointment with one or a phone number with the Vermont Law School. I think anyone can. Okay. They have so money. That's, that's great. great. And that's for the flood. We yeah. have attorneys in Montpelier who live here who can be on call when something goes down, maybe help with the police team. You know, um, if there's an RFA that's needed, I'm talking about nitty gritty help that people need that they cannot afford. Okay. Thank you. And involuntary commits who need to get out of there because they don't belong to And she is a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come on up. Come on up. And this group, you guys can come on up too. Stand in line. Uh, I'd like to see access for all. That means plain language, American Sign Language, captioning, uh, websites usable by screen readers for the blind and visually impaired. And my biggest priority is what we like to say, nothing about us without us. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mm -hmm. yes. Put it up, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, don't assume gender identity. Yes. Okay. Um, one of mine is about housing. Uh, thank you to all of the people who, yeah, who said lots of ideas that I had not heard of before. Um, and uh, also connecting Montpelier to the surrounding towns to share resources and support because we have so much here and so many of the towns are not. What is your uh, wife's business? Me? Oh, that, that, was, that, was, that was. That's very expensive. Bailey Road. Yeah, okay. uh, the thing that I would like to see is uh, homeless support services continuing. I know that homeless support has been there, but it relied so much on volunteers and the coordination was difficult. It would be great if the city and the state were more supportive of homeless services and we moved it from volunteers to maybe more professional services. And uh, the second one, this woman talked about a housing referral system where uh, housing that's available could be published, housing that's needed could be published, and there could be some coordination that can tie those together. Great. Yes, come on up. Yes. Martin and friends. Yes. Uh, yeah, affordable, accessible, new, safe, resilient options for housing. Um, and then my second one was language access options and continued language access options outside of times of crisis, starting with an assessment of needs. The city still hasn't done any language assessment. Um, child care at all future meetings um, and uh, racial and identity conflict mitigation processes to have accountability for the city and for independently harmed individuals. Thank you. Okay. Martin, we, we need to move along. We've just got 10 minutes okay. and we've got to come up with our three priorities or one. Um, mine has more to do with, I guess it would be air quality and general atmosphere. And so I want to propose an event for around healing. It's a twilight community sing and smudging um, with Sage. I actually smudged um, the Capitol stationary side of the block the other day and would like to continue doing that through up and down Main and State Street with singing and music. Yeah. So that's fine. Okay. Yeah, I can go there. I'm just going to put this under the more housing because more housing. Um, <laughs> um, but I'm also, you know, short term and long term wondering like, are folks from Vermont Housing and Conservation Board in the room? Where are we at with Act 250 being revised? Um, and what can Montpelier and the surrounding towns do to move that conversation forward? Thank you. OK, so now we have a number of um, action ideas. Yes? Um, this is sorry, this is back in the realm of um, 
mental health. I realize this is a great opportunity to let people know that the trauma um, trauma response network from uh, in from the local EMPR network is um, available to provide up to ten sessions of free um, EMPR trauma therapy. Um, to anybody who needs it, and um, I can give people more information about how to get in touch with them if you like. It's basically it's a volunteer-based um, effort to respond to the flood. Thank you. Please pass the word on to people who are in the Okay, so help me and Seth come up with, well, let's do this together. What were the key categories? Housing. 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 Anything about housing in particular that you heard? Inadequate at this moment. Okay. How to the need. Okay. Affordable. Affordability. Uh, uh, okay. So housing, affordability, and places to be, and everyone gets housed. And I think immediate solutions, I mean, like the Country Club project, that's 10 years down the road, but the home sharing, you know, somehow coordinating people who've got space with people who need space. Um, mm -hmm. It's a more immediate, you know, short-term, either short-term in the sense that someone's needs are short-term, or it can be implemented more quickly than building stuff. Right. Because okay. nature is coming. So it's clear. Housing. Uh, what's, what's another priority? Mental health. Yes. And what about it in particular? Uh, education, resources, and uh, support. Safer spaces. And recognition. Third spaces. Are, yeah. are we trying to come to a number one suggested action step? Is that what we're trying to do? Well, right now, most in general categories. Right now, um, what we're hearing is, is that housing is. Right, but, we're, but mental well, health is too. We don't know. We're not at that point yet. Okay. Um, I thought that's what we were supposed to bring back. Yes, it is. Um, Detoxification. Yeah. Cleaning the air, cleaning. Okay. Mold. Mold. Bacteria. Cleaning. Yeah. Testing. Yeah. Cleaning, testing, and also information sharing about yes. that. Yes. Seem like, seem like sort of the category that is there. Awareness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a short term, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what else did you hear? What would you really like to see right out there? Okay, let's take housing. What's one specific idea? that really jumped out at you. And we said, short term, mm -hmm. work with the resources that we have and the people in our community to find places within homes. <laughs> okay. And is there anything that does that already here in central Vermont? I mean, I know home share is up in the... Well, home, share, home share is also here. It is here. And I wonder if even like the senior center could be a hosting place for that network. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and, um, and mental health, making it a priority in legislature, in this town, and in our larger community. Um, so let's say, We've got three things here. Um, which one goes first? Housing, mental health, or cleaning up, testing, information sharing, detoxing our air, water, and streets. Okay. Well, we're what's, well, what's the rating system like going to give right? What uh, uh, for? Yeah. Um, in order to know how to rank them, I would okay. like to know what the rankings will be which, for. Which one do we have the best leverage um, in our community? Which one do we have the most um, you know, resources, energy, um, support? That could be something that gets done quicker than something that doesn't. Yes? I mean, if that's the, realistically, the thing that could probably get done quickest would be cleaning up all the toxic mud. Yeah. So, yeah, safely. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, by and then certified by some credible entity. But I'm saying yeah. we need to look for ourselves for the resources rather than looking at the government right now, short term. Like you can look some of this stuff up on the internet. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. That that's a short term okay. number one priorities. Yeah. 
detox. But uh, but uh, maybe a community group that comes together to work on this, and you're in it. The <laughs> issue is that there has been no stand, standards set. Right. 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 And so you have this guy over here doing one thing. Mm -hmm. This building hasn't even been down yet. So you know, I mean, my walls were opened after two weeks, and the mold was this thing. Yeah. No. So how thick is it in a space that has not even, the walls haven't been opened before, hasn't been removed? So, but there's no, there's no standard for what needs to, the bare minimum of what needs to be accomplished to allow the public in to a space. I get there's a debate about people, people's homes. You know, they do what you want, but when you're having the public, I'm gonna, I'm gonna interrupt you there. Um, so, can we have come to consensus that this be? This is our first priority? No. Uh, oh, only because I'm hearing this person say we don't have the leverage to make it our first priority and have it really mean anything. So at this point, I'm concerned that maybe it should be third. No, because, that's not what I'm okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, if this is a priority, we're going to make this happen. We're going to get the standards in. We're going to call the people in, and we're going to hurt. You know, okay. pressure on it. Let's create more housing. Create more housing, healthy first. Yeah. So finding homes for everyone before winter, yeah. before the cold really sets in, mm -hmm. and that means for everyone. So is that a good, doable, short term? I think that we've got a lot of uh, good resources and people who are really interested. And if we say that this is, this is what we want, this is where we want to start, big time, um, you know, then it's very targeted. And then mental health. What about me mental health? For me, I want it as number one priority in the legislature. <laughs> um, but um, what do we want for mental health? Yes. I think if we're talking short term and doable, mm -hmm. then I think yes to all the things. I'm a psychiatric nurse practitioner, it's my thing, mental health. But like Oh you are. I am. Yeah. Um, but I think in the short term what's doable and what's also coming out of remote prevention. Everybody's got their own okay. It's the third space. Yeah. It's like those collective spaces. Space. Yeah. Say that again? The third space. Third space. Third space. Third space. Third space. Yes. Places to get. Decrease the places. isolation, have people have a place to get. Okay. That's so sure. I'd like you, in a word, just throw out just popcorn. Um, what did you like about this this meeting and time together? Let's put a close to this. The moderator. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you. And what um, what else did you like? All Process. voices were heard. All voices yeah. were heard. What else? We're respectful. Yes. Respectful? Okay. And any how abouts for the next time we get together at these small group meetings? How could we do it a little more right? Some food. Food? Okay. <laughs> so got that don't, don't assume my gender identity. Yeah. Yeah. Don't ever assume gender identity. And that is really a big piece of work. More small group times. Yeah. More small group times. Certainly. Are we sure we're including you somehow? Yes. Okay, thank you. So let's all come together at um, some legislature in the big group.